Okay, good morning. If we can have everyone settle down, we will get started for our last and final session on Old Testament survey. So today we are looking at the three last books in the Old Testament. Uh, so we will be looking at Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi. All right, so let's get started. Uh, let's begin with the book of Haggai. Now, uh, all of these three books that we are dealing with today, they are written for people uh, who had come back from the exile in Babylon. Uh, these are exiles who have returned back home and um, all the three prophets are speaking to them, addressing them. Now, if you remember, eh, when we covered Ezra, Nehemiah, we talked about Cyrus. We talked about the time when Cyrus allows all the exiles to return back to their homelands. And so at that point of time, uh, around 50,000 Jews come back from Babylon to Jerusalem. And they come back under the leadership of the governor, Zerubbabel, who has been appointed as the new governor of this region. And along with him, you also have Joshua, the high priest, coming back. And there are two prophets who come along with them, Haggai and Zechariah. So these are things that we looked at when we covered uh, the book of Ezra. So now with this very first batch, which is coming back to Jerusalem, uh, you have Zerubbabel, the governor, Joshua, the high priest, and you have two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, who are returning back. Um, so in fact, the book of Ezra very briefly mentions these two people, uh, Haggai and Zechariah, and the work which they did when they came back from exile. So even as we are going to be looking at these two books today, Haggai and Zechariah, let's look at the introduction that is given about these people in the book of Ezra. So if we can have someone turn in their Bibles to Ezra chapter 5, uh, and if you could read out for us verses 1 and 2, Ezra chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, where something is mentioned about who is Haggai and who is Zechariah. Ezra 5, 1 and 2. Maybe someone online as the students here are not ready. Go ahead. Ezra 5, 1 and 2. Here in the book of Ezra chapter 5 verses 1 and 2, we are told that these two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, they encourage the people to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And when the people obeyed and began constructing the temple, it says the prophets of God supported them, encouraged them so that they would be able to complete the temple construction work. So, um, you know, I need the students here to pay attention. I mean, all of you are completely spaced out. Your brains are somewhere else. Please concentrate. All right. So, yeah. Um, so, these two prophets are encouraging the people to re start rebuilding the, the temple of God. And um, let's look at the outline. You know, if you look at Haggai, which has got only two chapters, in the first chapter, the focus is on this, where the uh, prophets are encouraging the people and telling them, you know, why have you delayed the construction work of the temple? You know, get started on it. And in chapter 2, uh, they give some encouragement about the blessings which will uh, come to them if they obey. 
uh, there are future blessings mentioned about what God will do in the future. Uh, there's even promises made about how grand this second temple is going to be in the future. All of those things are mentioned in these two chapters. So let's actually look at chapter one and what exactly Haggai says to the people to encourage them to start the rebuilding work. Because if you remember, uh, immediately after the exiles come back, they eagerly start off work. Uh, they build the altar once again so that sacrifices can start being offered. And they also start laying down the foundation for the temple which is going to be made. Uh, and then opposition begins. Once the foundation work for the temple starts, uh, then uh, the nations which are around start opposing them. And there's a lot of tension at that time. And as a result of that, after the foundation is finished, the work just stops because uh, there's too much pressure. There's too much opposition. Uh, the surrounding governors are sending letters back to Persia saying these people are trying to rebel and all of that. And so the work comes to a standstill. And in maybe for the first few years, the people were anxious and they were thinking, when can we restart? When can we complete this house of the Lord? But slowly, as the years go by, the people become lethargic. They become lazy. They stop caring about the house of God. So you just have the foundation which has been laid and they just leave it like that. They don't start building the actual uh, you know, temple building on top of the foundation. They just leave it like that. They start rebuilding their homes. They start establishing their fields once again. They start looking in, uh, to their own interests and their own livelihood. And the temple of God is almost forgotten. You just basically have the foundation laid out. And of course, you have the altar which was constructed. So it, sacrifices are being made. But beyond that, nothing at all is being done. So this is what God says to these people in Haggai chapter 1, verses 5 to 11. Now that's actually around 6 to 7 verses. But then if we could have someone read out for us, Haggai chapter 1, verses 5 to 11, what does God say about this attitude of the people where they have completely forgotten about the temple and they are very busy building up their own personal lives? Whatever God says to them over here can apply even to us believers today. So, you know, even as one person reads out these verses, let us follow in the Bible what is being said uh, and see some of the points which God is bringing out over here. Haggai chapter 1, verses 5 to 11, please. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sworn much and bring in little you eat. But do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into your bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked, so, you looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it, Home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withhold its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine with, and, with, and the oil. And whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock and on all the labor of your hands is the word of God. Thank you. So it says over here that the people have been planting a lot in their fields, but the harvest is very, very little. And the Lord says, you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. It's like as if they are earning from morning till night. They're putting in so much hard work. But finally, whatever they earn, when they put it into their, into their wallet, into their purse or whatever, it's like as if all the money is just disappearing. You know, and nothing is left in their hands. By the middle of the month, there's nothing. 
So the Lord says uh, in verse 7, give careful thought to your ways. Why do you think this is happening? Why are you putting in so much hard work and you don't see any results? You're, you know, working in the field from morning till evening, but the crop when it comes, the crop is so little. So God says, give careful thought to your ways. Why do you think you people are facing this kind of a scarcity? Why is there lack in your lives? And then the Lord says, you know, go up into the mountains and bring down timber, build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. So the Lord is indicating you people are not honoring me. You're very, very busy building up your own lives and I am not being honored. And so God says, this is my response. You know, the law in verse 9, the Lord says, you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. You know, whatever with, with a lot of hard work, whatever you brought home, whatever finances you brought home, I just blew it away. And then the Lord says, why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. And this is something that can happen even to us New Testament believers, where we are so busy building our own homes, our own lives, our own ministries. Even ministry can also just become a distraction, you know, uh, which is stopping us from honoring the Lord. So sometimes, we become so busy in building our lives, our ministries, our homes, that we have no time for the Lord. We don't spend time in his presence, honoring him, learning from him, you know, practicing his ways. And so the Lord says, when you do that, you maybe are expecting much because of all the hard work you have put in. But see, what have you produced? It's very, very little. You know, and this happens even to people in ministry. And I'm specifically emphasizing that because, you know, most of us are over here in Bible college, preparing ourselves for future uh, ministry. So when we are, you know, uh, working hard and ministering, we expect much. But the Lord says, if you are finding very few results, give careful thought and ask yourself, why are the results so less? Is it because you have sidelined me rather than keeping me as the main focus? Have, have you pushed me into a corner and I know, are you worshipping your ministry? Are you building up your homes? Are you building up your finances? If that is what is happening, then I am not being honored. And God says, if you do that, it is possible that I will choose to blow away whatever you have brought home. And uh, we see this actually, you know, in our lives. Um, when we place the Lord first, the Lord, you know, honors us in return. You know, we see that even in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where the Lord says, uh, Jesus is speaking and he says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So if you are focusing on his righteousness, walking in his ways, honoring him. And if you are building his kingdom, you know, focusing on the king, not just on ministry alone, but on the king who is supposed to be in charge of the entire ministry. So if we are keeping him as our focus, the Lord says, all these other things which you require will anyway be added to you. So you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be concerned. And so here the Lord says in the Haggai passage, you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. How does this happen? I mean, you know, if you have um, um, earned a lot that particular month, uh, in what way does that do all those, you know, um, finances disappear? What happens is a lot of unnecessary expenditures come in. You know, a lot of wastage happens. There'll be repairs which have to be done. Uh, you know, maybe maybe money gets stolen, you know, and then people borrow and don't return. There are different ways in which what you have earned just gets dispersed. So even though you have, you're sincerely working and earning and earning, 
it doesn't stay in the house it seems to all be going out and you're left with almost nothing and the lord says when that is happening give careful thought to what is you know going on in your lives this is a lesson that i know i learned watching my father you know so um when my parents first became believers and they began to learn about these things about you know the importance of placing god first in our lives the importance of tithing the importance of uh, um, you know uh, asking god for direction even in small matters before taking a decision uh, even as i began to see my parents doing that i could see a change in our entire um, you know position uh, earlier everything was so difficult but then when we began to place god first things began to improve and my one, one something that my father pointed out to me once you know which has always stayed in my mind he said have you noticed my income has not increased i'm a garment employee what salary i was getting earlier same salary i'm getting even now nothing much has changed but we seem to have more in our hands why is that because god is seeing that there are no holes in the pocket you know he's not allowing any wastage to happen the repairs are almost you know non existent no repairs no 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 need to waste money on repairs no uh, no money is getting uh, uh, you know spent on um on um, you know the basic things which have to be bought it's like as if we are getting discount offers this and that you know it's like god is making ways where he's allowing that little amount to be preserved so that it lasts till the end of the month so that there is enough for you know for us right up to the end of the month god prevents the holes from being formed in the purse he preserves what little we have and if we have placed him first so uh, my my father said uh, you know god even though he has not made us rich whatever we have is preserving it protecting it so that it lasts longer so that it's able to bring in more so that we're able to purchase much more with the little that we have and so i began to understand the importance of spiritual principles which can bring about transformation even in our ordinary everyday lives you know i began to realize that if god is placed first everything else is taken care of like it says in the matthew 6 passage all these things will be added to you the pagans they desperately run after these things they they you know they have no one to depend on so they have to fight they have to struggle they have to work hard to get those things but those of us who are placing the kingdom first those of us who are placing righteousness first the lord will add these things to us we don't have to desperately run after those things because the lord takes care so these principles are being being brought out in uh, the first chapter of haggai and haggai says to the people change your ways why don't you start honoring the lord first and one practical way that these people are being asked to honor the lord is by starting the construction work again yes a position has been there yes you know um, for a while uh, persia gave a official order that the work should be stopped but all those issues have now been resolved so why are the people still delaying and so you know after a 15 year delay now you know the um, prophets are saying honor the lord by restarting the work and uh, so when haggai and zechariah encourage the people in this manner they actually respond they listen to what the prophets are saying and within 24 days of haggai giving this message they actually start the reconstruction work so i think the people were willing to repent they were willing to listen to what god is saying and they begin the reconstruction uh, work so in the same way you know even if we were to apply these principles to ourselves and in case we have not been placing the lord first if we are willing to do that we too would would see the lord taking care of our needs um uh, so you have joshua the high priest who is there at that time and you also have zerubbabel the governor now this is the word of words of encouragement which the lord gives to these two specific leaders because they are the ones who are going to supervise the construction work they are the ones who are going to you know guide the people encourage the people so um 
in the book of zechariah the lord says some very positive things for joshua the high priest here in uh, the book of haggai uh, the lord says some positive things for zerubbabel the governor so we we'll look at this um, um, haggai passage first which talks about zerubbabel the governor and this is what god says to this governor um if we can have someone read out for us haggai chapter 2 verses 20 to 23 haggai 2 20 to 23 shalai madam uh, yeah yeah go ahead please go ahead yeah and again the word of the lord came to haggai on the 24th day of the month saying speak to jerubabel governor of yuda saying i will shake heaven and earth i will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms i will destroy the strength of the gentile kingdoms i will overthrow the, overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them the horses and their riders shall come down everyone by the sword of his brother amen um 23 yeah in that day says the lord of hosts i will take you jerubabel my servant the son of shelthiel says the lord and will make you like a signet ring for i have chosen you says the lord of hosts amen yeah so um when the people first came back from exile they were very excited because a lot of prophecies had been made about how a messiah will come how the uh, yeah, the throne of david will be restored and all of that they assume that you know so as soon as they come back all these things will start happening the years were going by there was opposition uh, there was struggle things were not going the way they had expected so slowly they lost enthusiasm for the things of god and they you know they began to become very slack so god over here he says it is true that right now you are not seeing something great and spectacular happening but continue to remain faithful continue to do the things which i have asked you to do because in the future there are some great things awaiting this nation so he says you know there's going to be a day when the heavens and the earth will be shaken royal thrones will be overturned and the lord says you know uh, that he will take a descendant of zerubbabel uh, and he will make him like his signet ring uh, so in verse 23 uh, it sounds like as if the lord is speaking this directly to zerubbabel himself but then you know we we see that uh, this prophecy is not fulfilled in zerubbabel directly but uh, through one of his descendants um, so the lord says i will make you zerubbabel like my signet ring now zerubbabel was actually a descendant um of uh, king david so that is probably why cyrus appointed him as the governor when you know when when this group of people were returning back to jerusalem uh, because he was from that lineage uh, so um so god is encouraging zerubbabel and saying there are great things awaiting your nation in the future so if you will encourage the people if you will be a good leader who will give them new vision if you if you will encourage them to place me first then i can do all the things which i have planned for uh, you know all of you so in the same way even in our lives when we have been expectantly praying and waiting upon god and we don't immediately see the results we may start losing enthusiasm we may we may grow discouraged and say ah where's the point god is not doing anything much so you know let me just get on with my life that should not be the attitude it's never about just me building my life it is always about placing him first and placing his purposes first so uh, even though we don't see any miracles happening in the current present we should continue to hold on to the lord and continue to work with the same enthusiasm because a day is indeed coming when what god has promised will be fulfilled so uh, in our eyes it may look like what god has promised is being delayed but there's no delay because god has decided that he will do certain things at a certain time so in the meantime during our period of waiting 
we need to retain the enthusiasm we need to retain you know that hard work and that sincerity and if we do that when the time comes god will shake the heavens and the earth god will fulfill what he has promised um now um it is significant what god is saying over here to zerubbabel you know who has come back over here as the governor and god is saying i will make you like my signet ring this is a, a very significant statement because of what had happened earlier um let us look at jeremiah 22 24 and then we will see something that god says to one of the descendants of david uh, in jeremiah 22 24 again the word signet ring is mentioned and let us look at what god says over there jeremiah 22 24 in jeremiah 22 24 god says even if you were a signet ring on my finger i would pull out the ring and i would throw it away is what god says so this actually is uh, jehoya kin that god is talking to now josiah was a very godly um, uh, you know um, king josiah son was jehoya kim and jehoya kim's son was jehoya kin so josiah was a godly leader but both his son and his grandson jehoya kim and jehoya kin these two are not godly kings and the lord is very displeased with them which is why god says so this is what the descendants of david are like is it you know i made a covenant promise to david i said that one of your uh, one of his descendants would always sit on the throne of jerusalem but look at the descendants they have no respect for the lord they are not honoring the lord in fact jehoya kim and jehoya kin are living completely sinful lives having forgotten the example set by josiah so the lord is highly displeased and he says i am disgusted with this entire lineage i don't want kings like this on my throne and so the lord says even if you were a signet ring on my finger i would take the ring pull it out and throw it away is what the lord said to one of the descendants of david um now the signet ring was basically the ring which the king would wear on his uh, finger you know which has got the royal seal the royal emblem so whenever the king wants to uh, send some official message uh, you know he would take the ring he would use the pattern which is there on that uh, you know ring um, to make a seal impression you know um, those of us who are familiar with older letters you know maybe would be familiar with this concept where we actually have that uh, wax candle stick you know you melt a little bit of that wax onto the uh, envelope and then you press the stamp of uh, whatever emblem you want to put over there so a signet ring is like that the king would basically you know uh, imprint his royal emblem using wax onto the messages which he wants to send so the signet ring was something very valuable to something very important and the lord says even if you were that kind of a signet ring you know the lord says um as surely as i live declares the lord even if you jehoiakim son of jehoiakim king of juda were a signet ring on my right hand i would still pull you off but now god is looking at zerubbabel zerubbabel is not a king he is just the governor who has been brought back god is looking at him looking at his ways and the lord is pleased with him and the lord says you know if you will take your leadership position seriously if you will encourage the people the way i am asking you to do then i am willing to make you sig- the signet ring once again which means you know the lineage of uh, david will continue so it's actually a great honor that the lord is bestowing upon this governor um so even though zerubbabel himself does not become king through his lineage you have the messiah coming so in the new testament you know where you have the uh, lineage of the messiah being mentioned uh, you know the uh, the ancestors of of jesus and how he you know uh, who are the descendants through whom jesus came 
Matthew chapter 1 in verses 12 and 13, Zerubbabel is mentioned in that lineage. Again in Luke chapter 3 verse 27, Zerubbabel is mentioned in the lineage of the Messiah. So God decides, I will make this person my signet ring once more because this seems to be a person who will be willing to do the task of leadership that I have given him. So all of us sitting here, we are going to be in different kinds of leadership positions. As a leader, what is God expecting of you? What does he want you to convey to the people who are under you? In what way does he want you to inspire them? In what way does he want you to guide them? Are you being a good leader? If you are really being an honest, sincere leader who is conveying to the people what God wants to be conveyed, then the Lord will look at you like as if you are a signet ring. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, any Messiah is going to come from your lineage. Uh, you know, let's not take it out of context. But what I'm saying is God values leaders like that who are willing to pass on the vision which he wants conveyed to the people. So he, he values and appreciates leaders who are not just building their kingdoms, but who are willing to convey what God wants conveyed to the people, to lead the people in a, in a way that the, that the Lord wants them to be led. He values such leaders. So you and I who are you know, here right now, we can choose to be that kind of a leader. So even though you know, you're never not going to be a, a, a signet ring from whom the Messiah is going to come, God will look at you as if you are as valuable as a signet ring. All right. So, um, so this is a little bit that God says to Zerubbabel to encourage him. Uh, the words which the Lord speaks to Joshua, the uh, priest, uh, that is found in the other book, uh, book of Zechariah. Um, another one thing that we uh, see over here in the book of Haggai uh, is regarding the second temple, which the people have now started to reconstruct. Um, if we look back at Ezra chapter 3, you know, when the foundation was laid at that time, uh, we, we, we talked about this earlier, I think in a couple of classes, how when the foundation was first laid for the second temple, some of the people were very happy and some of the people were very sad. Uh, you know, just to remind ourselves, maybe we can just read out those particular verses. So in Ezra chapter 3, if someone could read out just uh, verses 12 and 13, Ezra chapter 3, 12 and 13. Ezra chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. But many of the priests and levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes, yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the short shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people, for the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. There All right. So here um, it says that some of the older people who had been alive before the people were sent into exile, they still remember in their minds what Solomon's temple looked like, how grand it looked, how beautiful it looked. And so now when they look at the foundation which has been laid for the second temple, they look at that foundation and they think, oh, this building which is going to come up over here, it's not going to look like Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple was so grand. It was so beautiful. This, on the other hand, looks so simple. This foundation is so simple, so the building which is going to come upon it is going to be probably even simpler. And so some of the older people are weeping and, and crying and you know mourning the glory which they had earlier because all that glory is now gone. They have come back and they thought some, that something big would happen. Nothing big has happened. In fact, a lot of opposition has been faced. And now with some uh, you know difficulty, they have put, put down one simple foundation. So the older people who remember the glory of Solomon's temple, they weep and they cry. On the other hand, the younger generation, they are grateful that at least they have been able to do this much of the you know construction work. 
and so uh, they rejoice and it says that the shouting of uh, the shouts of joy and the sound of weeping combined together uh, to make so much noise that the sound was heard far away that is the response of the people when the uh, temple foundation was laid and so now keeping that in mind about 15 years later this is what god is saying through haggai so if someone could read out haggai chapter 2 um verses 2 and 3 and also verse 9 haggai chapter 2 uh, verses 2 and 3 and also verse 9 please I speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Sealtiel governor of Judah and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest and to the rem remnant of the people saying who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory and how do you see it no it no it comparison with it is this not in your eyes as not nothing in verse 9 the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former says the lord of hosts and in this place i will give peace says the lord of hosts so the lord is saying these things to zerubbabel and to joshua the high priest the lord says to them you know you may be feeling discouraged just like all the other people you look at the simple foundation and you and you're thinking oh once upon a time we had such a glorious temple once upon a time we were a great nation now what are we even though god has made promises nothing much has happened and so god is telling these two leaders you know uh, those of you who are left you may see this house and you may think that it is nothing compared to the what was there earlier he says who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory how does it look to you now does it not seem to you like nothing you know does this uh, the simple foundation does it doesn't it look like nothing compared to the former glory of solomon's temple but god assures in verse 9 and he says you know the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house because the lord says in this place i will grant peace so uh the lord says you may be looking at these at these things in the natural and you may think oh with our physical eyes this present foundation looks so simple what was uh, there in solomon's time was so big and so majestic so through our physical eyes it may appear like that but god says when you look at this place spiritually through spiritual eyes this is going to be a much more glorious place because in this current temple the second temple you literally are going to have the son of god walking around i mean in solomon's temple god didn't come down and walk around but here in the second temple which was rebuilt that is the temple in which jesus literally walked around healed preached did miracles so the glory of this current temple is actually much greater than the glory of solomon's older temple and also god says in this place i will grant peace it was in the second temple that you know uh, we were given those words of peace where not only uh, the people of jerusalem and juda uh, and the israelites would receive peace from god but even us all of us gentile nations you know we would one day have peace with god god would no longer be wrathful against us you know and we would be able to uh, become part of the family of god all these great things happened in this second temple which looked very simple back then of course you know when when herod came along he wanted to uh, you know butter the people uh, so he um, made it grand and all of that but up to that time up to the time of herod the second temple looked very very simple um so sometimes when we look at what is going on in our lives when we look at the contributions which we are making towards the lord when we look at what are the achievements that we are doing maybe the maybe something as simple as the assignments that you are writing in the natural 
what you are doing may look very insignificant it may not look very high fi it may not look like anything great but if you are doing it with a very sincere heart you know like an honorable sacrifice to the lord giving it your 100% when the lord looks at it through his spiritual eyes he doesn't just see something you know very insignificant he in fact sees something very very great because you have given your very best to the lord and he sees the value of that so what you have sown in sincerity will one day reap a harvest that is very very great never forget that in the natural some things look very very insignificant but if you have given your very very best to that little bit which you have sown into the kingdom of god the harvest which is going to come out of that will be glorious because the lord will honor what you have sown so never ever look down on what you have done with the lord's backing with your entire heart and passion you know with prayer saying lord i'm doing this unto you if you have done something with that attitude then when the time of harvest comes the glory which will come from that will be very great because the lord will honor what you have sown in sincerity on the other hand if you have been doing your work you know whether it is ministry or whether it is the responsibilities that you have uh, in life uh, whether it is you know your um, your your private devotional life and your prayer life whatever it is if you've just been doing it as a ritual then when the you know if you if you're sowing all of it in a very casual way then the crop which will come out of it will have absolutely no glory so it's the lord does not look at things through natural eyes he looks at it through spiritual eyes so even though the second temple looked so simple there was great significance because out of this what was being done sincerely by the zerubbabel and joshua out of the simple thing which they were doing god was going to bring out great and glorious things in the future okay so these are all uh, powerful lessons which come out to us through this uh, uh, book of hagai you now very very quickly to moving moving into the book of zechariah um now zechariah basically has um 14 chapters so the first eight chapters of zechariah were written before the temple construction was completed all right so uh 24 days after hagai gives his uh, you know words of correction the people start reconstruction work uh, so at the same time even zachariah is also you know ministering along with hagai so he writes the first eight chapters of his book before the completion of the temple and then after the te uh, the temple construction is complete he writes the next few chapters chapters 9 to 14 are written after the completion of the temple so in the first section the first eight chapters these are the kind of prophecies that he makes he talks about all the visions which god is giving him you know visions of correction visions of judgment visions of what god will do in the future so uh, a series of visions are described in the first eight chapters he also encourages the priests to take their you know work more seriously to be more sincere in in serving the lord um he also encourages the people to come back to the true faith uh, you know to honor the lord by obeying him so all those things are there in the first eight chapters uh, so he, in his own way the lord you know uh, is using him to encourage the people to return back with their hearts to do the construction work with sincerity not with hypocrisy and so all of that and then in the the, the chapters 9 to 14 are completely different they have an apocalyptic message that word apocalypse basically talks about the end times the time of judgment the time when god will do the the final things which he has planned for the earth so um, chapters 9 to 14 are more um, apocalyptic in nature where he talks about the judgment which will come upon the you know enemies of god and and all of that um 
and uh, there are many passages which talk about the messiah who is going to come so all those things are described in uh, in very um, complex language you know in chapters 9 to 14 let's look at uh, some significant things from this from you know from this uh, latter portion um if somebody could read out for us um some of the prophecies of the messiah which are given in this second portion you know chapters 9 to 14 uh if we can have someone read out for us zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 which is actually a very famous prophecy uh, about the messiah zechariah 9:9 zechariah 9 verse 9 rejoice greatly o daughter of zion shout o daughter of jerusalem behold your king is coming to you he is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey a colt the foal of a donkey so here in zechariah 9:9 9, uh, the lord says when the king comes to you he will come to you riding on a donkey i think we have covered this earlier um very difficult to remember what was covered in which class uh, you know uh, a, a a horse a war horse represents violence it represents judgment on the other hand a donkey represents peace because it's not an animal of war it's just a peaceful uh, you know uh, animal that is used for transportation purposes uh, so the lord the, the point that god is making over here is that when the king comes he will not come to judge juda he will not come to destroy the israelites he will come on a donkey to signify that he is coming in peace he is not coming to judge them or to destroy them rather he is coming to uh, help them to save them so that is what it it talks about over here um it says see your king comes to you righteous and victorious lowly and riding on a donkey uh, in some of the versions it will say in, in with humility is coming humbly so the king of kings and lord of lords when he finally comes to the nation of israel after all their years of sinfulness he will not come to destroy them actually that would have been the correct thing to do you know the people never honored the lord the people uh, never respected him or obeyed him so now when the king finally comes he should actually be coming on a war horse to finish them off but instead he comes with humility it says over here and he and he comes uh, in peace to restore them another term that is used over there he comes victoriously so just because he is coming on a donkey does not mean that you know he doesn't have victory in his hands just because he is not seated on a war horse it doesn't mean that he is not coming with victory even though he is coming with humility even though he is coming with peace in his heart he is also coming with great victory so just because the king of kings came on a donkey the evil forces you know satan and all his demons they thought that they could finish him but then they realized that even when the king of kings comes on a donkey rather than on a horse he is just as powerful and so uh, the lord is able to accomplish on the cross what he had you know purposed so he comes with victory he comes with humility to save jerusalem and to help the people um there are other few prophecies that we can look at um about the messiah we will look at those you know after the break uh, so yeah thank you